hey guys welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are good guys today we're going to be reacting to candace owens q and a abortion debate and advice for young conservatives guys let's go right into this i don't know if it's stupid to say i'm neutral about pro-life or pro-choice it's not stupid at all because i know that the person that i have a baby with will be my husband so but because not everybody has the same morals and the same principles as I do, um, and due to free will, people will have premarital sex. And when that happens, a baby will happen. Um, so wouldn't it be better for the child's sake and happiness to not be born at all than to have a deadbeat father and a promiscuous mother, or even when it comes to hap like, or even when rape happens? Like, personally, if I was a kid and I know that my mom was raped, and my dad is the rapist, like, yeah. I would be sad, like, I, I wouldn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. So what does it truly mean to be pro-life? Like, are you pro-rape? Are you pro, like, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay, guys, let me ask the question. Like that, like I think it's totally fine for you to ask the question. Go yeah. ahead, finish. Um, but it's like, I'm all for, like, because I'm all for, like, family values, mm -hmm. but having a child raised like that, mm -hmm. What type of family value is that? Okay, great question. Thank you for asking it. Um, so I think I was pretty open about the fact that I used to be pro-choice, and so I want to first acknowledge what you're saying because one of the things that the left is really great at is arguing in extremes, right? The most extreme scenario. What if you are a 10-year-old and you are raped and you get pregnant, right? Rather than addressing the fact that 99% of the abortions that we're dealing, 99.9% .9 of the abortions that we're dealing with are not in those circumstances at all. And it's just people that are having promiscuous sex and wanting to get rid of their children because they don't want, they're not prepared to be parents. Um, so I first want to say that you, to, to argue into the extremes is not productive because as a government you have to rule, uh, to, create policies that are good for the majority of people. You're never going to get it perfect, but the majority of people. The second thing that I want to speak to is you saying that you don't think it's, you know, that situation that you would want to be born into. Well, I have done a lot of work with pro-life charities, and they have had people who were the children of rape scenarios, and they're glad to be alive. So it's, it's, it's not our decision to say whether or not someone's life is valuable in order to hear what they think they kind of have to be born, right? And the last thing that I'll say as somebody who was raised in not the, the greatest circumstances and who came from a broken family, I sure as hell am glad that I was born. So thank you so much for your question. I totally understand it. Um, so guys, I would say that, I'm just going to chip in, I would say that um, children have blessings and I don't really support abortion when it comes to that. And you don't have to like, make I, I don't feel i don't feel you should make that decision you know to about a baby i mean it's it's enough trauma you getting raped or you being sexually assaulted yeah it's enough trauma to deal with but i just look at life in a certain way that you know you having to go through this trauma and then still getting pregnant i mean not everybody that gets raped gets pregnant but you having to go through all this i'm just using rape as you know uh reasonable scenario you having to go through this trauma and then you still like you still get pregnant i just feel i mean it's god's will like if you believe and you, you live according to god's will i mean it's just god's will because not everybody in your state goes through the same thing not everybody i guess gets pregnant so if you actually get pregnant i feel like it's god's will because god sees that you are going through enough and if you seeing a child as you know another trauma another traumatic experience definitely like you don't expect it you don't expect to get pregnant you don't expect it to come to you because it will probably drain you mentally but you're still getting pregnant i just feel it goes real and you never can tell what that child is going to become so you can't just you know kill the child before the child is even born but guys i also love to hear what you guys have to say about this but let's get to the next question I was just wondering, um, where do you think, you know, the average college, uh, conservative college student can land in a corporate environment that is changing just like the, institu the college institutions did? 
a long Actually, time ago. Actually, I would disagree. Uh, the free markets kind of gets rid of BS pretty quickly. Um, I always say to people, man, if you are majoring in gender studies, what are you going to do with that degree? It might be time to stop and reevaluate. Um, because I just got to tell you, nobody ever in my life once has said, quick, get a gender studies major here. We have an emergency. Um, and so at the end of the day, and as somebody who is an unapologetic free market capitalist, it, the, the free markets will take care of it. They're not just going to be hiring gender studies majors at Goldman Sachs to fill some quota, right? Um, and when, you, know, you think Elon Musk is like, I'm going to hire a few, you know, people that majored in gender studies because I had the fill quota. No, at the end of the day, you actually are going to have to be skilled to enter the workforce. And I think that's actually part of the reason why when a lot of these students get out into the world, they're so angry because they can't make any money and they feel like the system has cheated them. And in many ways it has. You've been kind of rinsed and brainwashed with all these ideas, believing that if you pursued these social issues as degrees, now you're in tons of debt. You can't get a job because nobody Nobody thinks that you're really that smart because you, you know, studied all of these obscure topics. It is a bit unfair, and that's what I hope to undo, and that I help people have this awakening and understand that you gotta, you got to be able to provide something. you got to – way better to stay out of school and learn how to fix air conditioners. I'm dead serious. They're making a ton of money, a killing. <laughs> learn how to work with your hands. So, guys, um, with this particular question, I'm going to say uh, there are a lot of – you know, questions that people are studying in university right now that once you get out, trust me, you're not going to get a job. No matter how hard you look, you won't find a job. I mean, even if you find something, trust me, it won't be related to exactly what you studied because that is how it is now in this present era. I mean, but like, it is really good to, you know, make money with your hands. You can't just have, that's why you hear people asking, oh, what's your backup plan just in case school doesn't work out? Because for like, um, I'm going to say like 68 percent of you know graduates don't get a job once they're done with school. So like if you learn something, you learn a handiwork or something, that could fetch you more money than your degree. That's to some people, it could fetch you more money than your degree actually. So I feel like everyone should try to you know learn something they could do with their hands, which could help them, just in case school doesn't really work out for like those people. But guys, let's get right back. Hi, um, so I'm a girl going through like high school and my school is very liberal. So what advice would you give to like conservative teenage girls? Very hard on the teenager stuff because a lot of times like in colleges at least they can invite conservatives to speak and when it's high school it's a little different because you're under the age of 18 and so the state has a lot more control over you. Um, the, the advice that I tend to give to people that are in high school and people that are in middle school is really advice for their parents um, and it's for parents to find their voices and to encourage your kids to stand up for themselves. There was the recent story, I don't know if you guys saw, of the kid that had the don't tread on me on his backpack. and. You should just go find him if you haven't. Don't tread on this kid. I did a whole episode on it. And I think he was eight, nine years old, and he had a backpack, and the teacher said that it was racist to have the don't tread on me thing on his backpack. Not only was this kid so educated and basically told her she had no idea what she was talking about, but then he had his mother behind him in the administrator's office saying that she was not going to make him take this off of his back, the decal off of his backpack. And to be that sort of a student in the world, to know who you are, to assert who you are to these teachers, to not back down from it, but then to have the backing of your parents that say they're not going to tolerate it. Too many parents have become fearful of of being called a name, whatever that name is. You're a homophobe, you're a sexist, you're a racist. Half the time you're dealing with teachers and administration that have no idea what the heck they're talking about and they're trying to, you know, make you silent. They're just trying to silence you and to say that this is the way it's going to be. Students need to find their voice, but parents need to be able to back up that voice with a megaphone. So that's what I would Thank say. Thank you. Thank you so much. So guys, I totally agree with her when I say um, students should be able to speak up for themselves, especially those like in um, high school and, you know, primary school. I feel like parents should also, you know, sit their kids down and advise them, you know, when you're not wrong, especially those that get bullied because, yeah, in this present day era, people still get bullied. I mean, you should be able to advise your kids and tell them, oh, when so so and so is happening, you should be able to, you know, stand up for yourself, be able to speak up for yourself. And just in case it gets to the essence of, you know, the school calling your parents, when you know that your kid is not wrong, you should be able to back up your kid and be like, Yeah, my kid is not wrong. So I, I don't I, I don't agree with what's going on here. Like but nowadays like 
most parents are should i say scared that maybe people will say oh why are you this type of parent? Or oh, why are you saying this? Or oh, you should be more mature. But it's the truth. I mean, you should be able to back up your kid. You know, I cannot see my kid that in the right and still be speaking for the opposite side. I mean, my kid is not wrong. So yeah, I'm going to start with my kid. I'm going to support my kid. And I don't care what you guys say. That's how it's meant to be. And that way, you're also encouraging your kid that you didn't do a wrong thing by standing up for yourself. It should be like that. But guys, the more you think about this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. Love you guys.